What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Um, today I ran into a problem I was not expecting. Not that we are expecting very many problems usually. However, I must have had some sort of electrical spike here at my house because I have multiple items that were connected to the same unprotected power strip that are now bad. That includes the TV, no real loss feelings. It's an extremely heavy 1080p flat screen display. However, you know, it was serving a purpose and I don't like when electronics just go bad. So maybe I'll do a forensic exploration into why the TV broke. I don't know, you guys let me know if I should go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll do it, maybe I'll break it down because if it is in the power supply, it's probably something that's very fixable. If you guys uh, write enough and tell me that you'd like to see that, then maybe I'll do that. But if not, the TV will just probably go to the wayside. We'll see. But today, I have a very powerful little Android box right here called the NVIDIA Shield. It is possibly the best Android box for displaying video for your home. And it's got many, many features. I absolutely love this. Every single TV in my house has an one of these to some degree, um, little NVIDIA Shield, and they are phenomenal. I use these as Plex media players, and um, also uh, we can stream YouTube on them. You can do a lot of stuff on these, but um, this guy is probably the NVIDIA Shield that I've owned the longest, and it is not turned on, not at all. So, normally when something like that happens, one would automatically suspect the switching power supply. And you would probably be right to think that. However, I did take this guy, like I said, I have him on every TV. I took it to another TV and I plugged it into that power supply and it did not turn on. And for fear that I would maybe damage that power supply, I unplugged it quickly and then I plugged that part or I plugged this guy into that power supply, didn't work. I plugged that guy into this power supply and it did work. So this power supply is fully functional. It did power up the other NVIDIA shield. So this guy here is malfunctioning. So what probably happened? Well, these type of switch mode power supplies are phenomenal at filtering out a lot of garbage that comes through because it's technically isolated, right? It's isolated from mains. So I wasn't really thinking that that was the mode and means for it to get damaged. However, there is one other evil little connector that probably did it in, the HDMI. So the HDMI couples any device to another device. It does, it does have audio, it does have video, but it also shares the ground. It couples the two together. So if the TV, for some weird reason, through a spike voltage or something like that, I have had this actually before, where um, I had a lightning strike, it came through the phone lines, of all things, the phone lines, it went into my AT&T router, and then uh, the router was controlling, it was connected directly to my Denon stereo, and because it was connected to my Denon stereo, it zapped the TV, the stereo, the Xbox, everything that was connected with uh, through the same Ethernet hub, they were all dead as doornails. Not that they were ever alive if they're doornails. However, so this guy here probably would have protected it if that is where the fault came through. But TVs, TVs are unique little creatures because they're almost all directly connected to mains. So they have an internal power supply, unlike this external power supply, which shields the, the native device so that I believe that the TV received some sort of shock or it emitted the shock due to maybe a power failure. Uh, maybe there's a dead short or something that happened. And after that, I believe, since it was coupled to this with HDMI, and those are the only two connections that happened, I believe the HDMI is actually what took this device out. So what we are gonna do today, since I have proven that this guy here is effective and it does work, I'm gonna to switch to the overhead camera. We are gonna go ahead and disassemble this guy and see. We're gonna see. Because if it came through the HDMI port, maybe we're gonna see some coupling capacitors or something like that fried near the port. Um, but more than likely, 
we probably won't see a, a single thing because if it if it came through that three three and a half volt the whole entire rail that handles all the CPUs and so that would be the APU or GPU the CPU and also like your HDMI and USB controllers a lot of those are on the same VCC and it could be five volt could be three point three hard to say if that is the case then we're probably not going to see anything so let's go ahead. Let's bring in the overhead cam. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. I have no clue. And um, I've had people that wrote me on my other videos that said, why do you surmise things? Why do you, why do you sit there and anticipate when you could just prove what's wrong and then do the video? Well, why? Because this is what we do. This is how you get better at being a technician, guys, is you take in all the evidence and you take, you know, Occam's razors. The simplest of two conclusions is usually the most correct. So either A, this guy here created the problem, or B, all the devices connected are probably somehow related, which they're only related with the HDMI. That's, that's, that's how you become a better technician, man. So let's go ahead and switch to the cameras and let's take a look. All right, so here is my beautiful NVIDIA Shield. I hope I can fix it because if I cannot, today's gonna be a sad day. I have a tiny little Phillips screw here. It's probably this guy. Wait. Yes. So I have two tiny little Phillips on the back. They do have a little bit of Loctite on them. Come on. They're so small. This is why it is so important to have good lighting, guys. So, so important. Okay, so it looks like that is it. There's one rubber pad on the bottom, but I do not believe there's any hidden fasteners under there. So we're probably just going to have to crack the case around and open it up. Right? Does it slide back? Yes. Okay. All right. So it slides back. All right. Well, there's just one connector here, and that's for the LED lights. I can fix that. So take a look at this device. I'm not gonna sweeten the deal. I'm gonna show you exactly how I see it. You can see that cooling fan right there. So this, this NVIDIA Shield has been hiding behind my TV for probably a long time. That cooling fan, see how I try to spin it? It is so dirty. So if I can get this guy back to life, it clearly needs to be cleaned, cleaned so bad. All right, um, so this is the reverse side of the circuit board. And let me go ahead and bring you guys in on the microscope so you guys can see up close and personal exactly what I'm looking at. There we go. All right. Hell yeah. Okay. So now you guys can see much better idea of what I'm talking about. So that fan right there is so dirty. And now that I know that there's two Phillips screws on the back, you now there's that one right there and one over here, um, and then it just slides forward, the case opens up, and right here is a little connector that I just tore off, and that's just for the LED. So I will have to be, oh, oh, oh. I'll have to be very careful. So the LED is not gonna work anymore because I just tore that guy off. Oh well. So the header for that guy is right here, this J something, you can see it right there. That's the remnants of it. Not too worried about that. It's just, it's just the LEDs. See them? Okay. Let's take a look. So as I'm exploring, right here is the HDMI port. And that looks pretty normal from this side. Yeah, it looks looks pretty normal. Okay. Well, one of the things that we always have to do is we have to start from the power connector because the power is coming in, it's not turning on. It needs two things in order to turn on. It needs it needs power, and then someplace in here, it will convert to a standby signal, and the standby signal is awaiting um, the the Bluetooth, where it says, "Okay, turn on." 
and I'm not sure where that is. It's probably on the reverse side of this board. This is, this is the back side of the board. You see right here is the tension for the, uh, for the CPU, right? Or is that? Hmm, I don't know. I would almost say that that's a shunt resistor, but it looks like it's just a tensioner, like it's putting tension down here and here. Anyway, um, this is the reverse side. You can see that here's my onboard storage, and you can see some of the coupling right here, and this is for the USB ports. This is the HDMI port that I was mentioning right here. Yeah. So I believe that the spike came in here and fried something. And I'll tell you guys right off the bat, visually, given my eyes are not as good as they used to be, I don't see evidence of any breakage. That being said, let's go ahead and let's dissect it a little bit more. Okay, so in order for me to pull it apart more, I need some little Torx. What is this? T5? Look at that. No, no, no. It's not T5. There we go. That's T6. And I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling these guys out. All the way around. Again, it's already broke, right? So why not explore? Oh, there it goes. Trying to get you guys the correct camera angles. All right. You can see the ones that are here on this strip. I do not know what this strip right here is for. No idea. It's, it's definitely the back side of the CPU though. Take a look, that, all those coupling caps right there, that's, that's for the CPU. And the big reveal. All right, of course, there's a whole bunch of heat shielding on there. Nice. Nice. What makes it even better is it looks like it is all tacked on. You see that? So I could pull off all that RF and heat spreading shielding. But... Let's go ahead and take a look over here at this power connector and let's see if we see anything that looks unusual. Got a tiny little resistor right here. Now mind you, some of these resistors act as fuses. So power comes in right here. And then it comes down here. Hmm. I wonder what this guy right here is. This M3295NL. Kind of curious about that guy. I see. That must be for the network right here. There's like a opto isolator or something for the network. All right. So the power phases is controlled through this right here. And I don't see anything that's visibly wrong. Why don't we uh, plug it in and see if it'll turn on, right? Here's power. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I know that you guys couldn't hear that. But there was definitely a high-pitched whine when I touch it right here. So here's the board. Here's my power cord right here. I'm going to get out the thermal camera. Let's see if we can determine if any power is coming over and if we have a shorted component because maybe the component's so tiny that I can't even see it. Maybe I, it's so tiny I can't even feel it. 
So I've got my thermal camera right here. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. It takes a moment. Okay, still booting up. Okay, we're booted, we're booted. And at first glance, what? It's reading like 89 degrees right here on this chip. Uh-huh, okay. All right, so let's plug it in, right? Let's plug it in, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scan it. So one of the problems with having this kind of shielding is this technique does not always work so well. I'm getting 128 degrees over here. The problem is, is it reflects back the, um, the infrared from the camera and you get bad readings. Okay. Oh yeah. So I'm showing, yeah, yeah, right here. It's definitely hot. So right here next to the CPU, I have a problem. Let's go ahead and switch it up. Uh, not green screen. Hey, how you doing? This is the camera that I'm using, right? So I, yeah, oh Jesus, yeah. So right here, in one of the power phases that's next to the CPU, it is hot. Like on the camera, I'm registering 150 degrees hot. And I'm gonna disconnect it because it's, it's getting way too hot, way too quick. Wow. So yeah, there's no cooling then again, this little bad boy wasn't turned on anyway. Okay, so I've got to uh, shut my camera off. And you can see it powering down. So one of my things is that I, I, I do take some pride in my tools, despite some, what some people say online. And uh, I definitely, oh, dang, that got hot. Okay, so I'm feeling around the board and this guy got pretty warm. All right, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy. Now, there's a good chance that it is, it's fried. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. That's okay, I've had this thing for probably, Jesus, since they came out. It's, it's been like eight years or so. Ah, let's see, I have here my handy dandy Milwaukee vacuum. So excuse the noise, guys. I'm gonna turn this guy on, and I'm gonna vacuum out this little squirrel cage fan Actually, tell you what, let's, let's switch it. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. So the trick is, is to uh, slow down the fan so the fan isn't just freewheeling because it's going to spin so fast just from the air moving around the fan that it could and probably will damage the fan. So you're gonna see me um, breaking the fan, or in other words, stopping the fan or slowing it down with my finger. Okay. You can see I'm using my fingertip to stop the fan from spinning. All right, so the fan is connected, or it's cleaned. I don't know how good that is though, because the fan still feels like it's not spinning quite as, quite as smoothly as maybe it should. I don't know, we'll see. So this right here is the heat sink for the uh, CPU. So anyway, let me just give that a good brushing. So yeah. Good. And we'll see. All right. I think we are ready to do some assembly. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna reassemble. Let's start with this guy. 
Make sure it's nice and clean in there. Right there. Okay. I had the heat sink in 180 degrees out. There we are. It's looking much better. All right, so I was correct about the spring. It is a tensioner for the CPU. Let's go ahead, put the first corner back on. Sorry about the camera angles, y'all. All right. And I guess we're just going to start going around and replacing these other fasteners. Okay, so now that that is all on, it should be safe to plug back in and test out a little bit further. Now, those headers, yeah, I really wish I didn't destroy those headers for the LED. It is what it is, right? So as this guy heats up from being plugged in, that fan should turn on, right? Well, certainly should. It wasn't connected before, but it definitely is now. So there's a couple different tricks to find out where the shorted component is. One of the main com ways of doing it is using rubbing alcohol, like 99% rubbing alcohol, and you put it on there and you see where it evaporates from first. It is definitely a technique, although you have to be really fast because it's really difficult, especially on boards this small. However, we can go and do things like um, rosin, like flux. You can put flux all over a board and see where it starts to bubble from. That's another way of doing it. I prefer the thermal camera method because I can snap a photo and prove exactly what's going on. So I'm seeing 99 degrees right over here. Actually, tell you what, let's kind of see the camera. So as I go around the board, there's different areas that are heating up at a much faster rate than other areas. There is some thermal activity right over here by the power, where it comes in from 12 or 24 volts and it kicks it down to your different power rails. All right, so right over here, right next to the CPU is where it gets the hottest, the quickest. Yeah, right over here, I'm currently sitting at 112 or so degrees. Man, that's, that's pretty warm. And it's warming up even more. I still think a power spike took it out and I didn't think I was gonna see what was really causing the problem. That's because with these microelectronics and when you're dealing with, um, you know, CPUs, GPUs, APUs, it doesn't take very much to damage them. I mean, they're, they're sitting on like three, three and a half volt power rails. And imagine just like a 1000 volt spike comes through for a split second, comes in on the HDMI port, maybe the entire grounding plane, because this could be, it could be isolated, you know, ground. And if it's isolated ground, that means that this whole unit for a split second is a thousand or 10,000 volts potential. And obviously that that's going to damage some things. Yeah, this, this right here is getting really hot. That fan is still not coming on. I don't even know if it's being told to turn on though. I guess we'll sit and wait for a moment. Ideally that fan should come on. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to do a little exploration, maybe see if there's anything really visually wrong with it. But as you can tell, this board here is pretty populated. It's pretty small, and there are some tiny, tiny components on there. It would take forever to troubleshoot this guy, and it's really not economical. I mean, I can pick more NVIDIA shields up for $100, $150, other than doing a video with you guys, maybe seeing something cool that I wasn't expecting, 
I almost normally wouldn't even open these up. It's very hot. It's right. It's really, dang, it's really hot right over here by the CPU. So it's entirely possible or probable that the CPU itself is completely shorted out. And if it is, rip. <laughs> Rest in peace, little buddy. You served me well for like a decade. But uh, yeah, NVIDIA Shield, that's what's inside it. Pretty easy to open up. The upper shield just slides forward just a couple couple millimeters and then it allows you to pull it off. It's all held in by two tiny, tiny little Phillips head fasteners. Wow, and it's, it's getting hotter. I would say that that's technically a, a, a fire hazard at that point. I mean, it's getting hotter and hotter. That's not natural. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, I, oh, geez. If it's hot enough to burn me, that fan should have come on already. And the fan's not coming on. It's possible that all that dust might have burned out the fan, but just is what it is, guys. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, guys, I wish I could tell you more. I wish there was more to it. Unfortunately, it's a lost cause. However, I do have one win out of this situation. I, I will never throw out everything. You see, this power cord right here is still a huge win because even though this box is broke, all the other NVIDIA shields in my house still use this type of power cord. So I'm definitely gonna save this. It is a special connector. You can see it right there. It's a square power connector, kind of like you'd see on some older Dell laptops and stuff. However, it is probably only five volt, but it, it probably kicks out a lot of amps. And so it's a special power cord. I'm gonna save it. So that's a teardown and exploration into NVIDIA shield. Dang, that thing's hot. <laughs> it just is what it is. Lost cause happens, right? Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, let me know if you want me to do an exploration into the TV. It's still hanging on my wall. Man, that thing's heavy. But if you guys want me to, I'll pull it down and we'll open it up. We'll take a look. Maybe it's something obvious. Maybe you're going to see something really burnt on that because it has AC mains that go straight into the box. It's got an internal power supply. And usually you have some sort of evidence that something happened. Let me know in the comments down below and uh, maybe I'll make that happen for you. Thanks for watching, guys.